Hello, my name is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about Avaya IP Office and Avaya B5800 Branch Gateway Remote Access through Secure Access Link, otherwise known as SAL. Before we get started with the demonstration, there are a few points to cover when accessing Avaya IP Office or Avaya B5800 Branch Gateway through SAL. There are two independent SAL models created, one for IP Office and one for the B1500 Branch Gateway, as seen on the screen. And the B1500 Branch Gateway requires a standalone SAL gateway. Each IP Office and B1500 will have to be registered and issued a unique solution element ID and an alarm or product ID, either by using the global registration tool or submitting the SAL Universal Install Product Registration form. IP Office and B1500 SAL connectivity models include mapping for all the ports required for remote support, but there are three exceptions to this. System Monitor, Remote Upgrade using Manager, and Embedded File Management using Manager are all not compatible through SAL at this time. These are known outages and are being addressed. Connectivity options in the models include Avaya Branch Gateway or IPO Clients, Secure Shell, HTTP, HTTPS, and Remote Desktop Protocol. So let's get started with the demonstration. Here in the Enterprise Server we have pulled up this SCID for this Branch Gateway. We see the connectivity is good. It's identified as a Branch Gateway. More, as you see me clicking around, more information that we have good ping connection and we see also the SEID for the SAL gateway controlling this managed element. If we scroll down, we can then find the IP address for the branch gateway unit in case that is needed. So let's scroll back up and reset the page. And on the right hand side you see the remote sessions that are available, the ABG clients, the HTTPS, Remote Desktop, and Secure Shell. We're going today to make use of the ABG clients. And in the reason for the connection, we'll just simply say test or type test and start a session. So as Java sets up, again, SAL is egress model only, so it's outbound polling back to our enterprise connectivity core server. And we see that we have set ourselves up requesting access to the B1500 device. So access has been granted and we're met with the status screen and it was telling us that connection is ready. We see we've been given a transaction ID, time of our connection, our direct link protocol that's encrypted state. And as you see here in the in this subsection of the model, this ABG or IP office client, see all the ports that are available. We don't have the launch application option. For, for IP Office or B1500, we have to make use of Manager directly. And instead of, instead of using Broadcast, you have to then set the Manager client to make use of the loopback. So we'll again use that loopback address, and it'll warn us that we're connecting directly to an IP Office unit. And we click OK. And what will happen is now we're going to be challenged to enter our authentication just as we would be if we were connecting directly on the network. Um, Sal is obviously um, proxying this request. And we've pulled a config up into the manager client using Sal. So I will um, close that out and do another network connect. I want to show you an oddity that can occur. We've selected the loopback address again, but as you see, the OK button is not initialized. It's not in focus. So there is, and I'm clicking on it several times. Now there's a way around this, an easy way. We'll set the loopback to dot two. Just change the address. It'll initialize the OK button. And then we'll set it back to dot one, the true loopback address. And now we can click OK again, get the warning on the direct connection and we'll be once again able to connect to the B1500 or IP Office unit. This procedure that you're seeing here works exactly the same regardless of whether it's B1500 or IP Office core units. And as we let this run, we will again through SAL pull a configuration into the manager client. 
So our double test there is done. Now let's go to IP Office System Status. Let's run the System Status application, otherwise known in the field as SSA. So in SSA, it's the same practice. Instead of pointing directly at a customer IP, which we can't, or an internal IP, we'll use the loopback address. We'll leave the port as the default port, unless it's been changed, automatic connect, and then we'll add in the proper authentication, username and password, and we'll select log on. So it'll pull data through, again being proxied by Sal through the loopback address, pulling core unit data into the SSA application. We see it's an IP Office V2 in the release, current release of branch edition. And then we'll click on the extension tab just to show once again that we have good data pulling into SSA being proxied through Sal. Back on the Sal Enterprise screen, we see our recent connections list has been updated. And if we look back at the connectivity status screen, we see all the ports in the model, and we also see a port in use. As ports are used out of the model, they will be updated as in use ports. And we're done with our connectivity, so we'll click End Session. Not shown in this video are some other connectivity methods that I want to just point out quickly here. We have HTTPS for managing IP Office CCR and 1X Portal for IP Office. We have Remote Desktop for remotely accessing Voicemail Pro Server on Windows, for instance, via SAL. And we also have the ability to connect in using SSH as an option in the connectivity model, which will be increasingly important as IP Office Linux variants are introduced along with the Linux-based application server. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.